Freddy. How's business? Just fine. Saved up enough to buy a new catcher's mitt. Good. Wait a minute. <laughs> Get yourself a new baseball, too. Oh, gee. Say, thanks, Mr. Madison. Uh, thanks a lot. Forget it. Henry up yet, Laura? Oh, he's up all right. I dumped him out of bed. Good for you. He's been late for school twice this week. Mm -hmm. Morning, Minnie. Breakfast ready? I'm doing the best I can. I only got two hands. All right, all right, all right. Won't be long. Hungry, John? You bet. Oh, Minnie, you might go up and wake Miss Marianne. Be sure you do it gently. You know how nervous she is. Yes, ma'am. I found that out. <laughs> Be sure and make them nice and brown, will you, Mother? I've been making them brown for 27 years. <laughs> oh. Morning, Minnie. You little rustin, frightening the daylight out of a person so early in the morning. Well, why don't you look where you're going? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I was your mother. I'd take you over my knee and land the bail like that. Oh, you would, would you? I yes, just I love would. to see you. Breakfast ready. Oh, Minnie. Oh, dear, I don't think I'm a bit well this morning. <laughs> then you don't want no breakfast. Wait a minute, Minnie. Perhaps a little breakfast would be good for me. Will you bring it up to me on a tray like a darling? Not me, I won't. I ain't hired to run up and down stairs for the likes of you. Minnie, you're being impertinent. Hmm. Hmm. There. How dare you? Well, you're nothing but a stupid, common, ignorant... Now don't you call me no names. I don't have to stand for nothing from you. Certainly do smell good, Mother. <laughs> Minnie, where are you going? Home. What's the matter? I'm just as good as she is and maybe better. She can't insult me that way and get away with it. Do you mean to say you've upset Miss Marianne again? Upset her? <laughs> I'd like to let her have one. Oh, come on now, Minnie. Don't let it throw you. Marianne don't mean no harm, and I'm sure you don't neither. Oh, I don't see why a poor girl has to take insults just because she has to go out and earn her own living. There, there, now, Minnie, don't oh. worry. Everything will be fixed up. Oh, well, all right. This once, but the next time... There won't be any next time. Well... All right, Mr. Madison. Mm -hmm. I'll be bringing him in. So, young man, you finally decided to get up, eh? Sure. Hey, Minnie, how about my pancake? Oh. If you yell like that, I won't give you nothing. Please, dear Minnie, may I have some pancakes? I'm not cooking them. Thank you. <laughs> There's the mail. I'll get it. Hello, Hendrick. Morning, Mr. Riley. There you are. Hey, something on your heel. <laughs> no, the other one. <laughs> ah, go on with you. <laughs> there. Thank you, Minnie, darling. John, here's a letter from Amy. What does she say? 
Be quiet and let Mother read. Well, don't you want me to be interested in my own sister? Hedrick. Oh. No bad news, Mother. Sam's lost his job. I always said he was dumb. Shh. Oh, what a pity. And the baby coming any time now. They're coming here to live. Till Sam gets on his feet. But they got no other place to go. Oh, well. We'll get along somehow. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning. Hey, Mumsy. Fine, dear. Hello, Laura. Good morning. Oh, Minnie, Miss Marianne's here. What am I supposed to do? Celebrate? <laughs> Young man. Hey, Kedra, can't you make less noise? I was doing an imitation. Didn't you get it? Get what? I was doing an imitation of the way you sounded last night when you was kissing on the front porch. You little liar. I ain't a liar. Well, I thought Wade left before we went to bed. He did. Well, then, who was... I thought you and Wade were practically engaged. What? Wade and I engaged? I should say not. Can you imagine me married to that big... He's cat? very successful. He's got the biggest insurance business in town. Who was on the front porch with you last night? I'll tell you who it was. It was Dick Lindley. And he asked you to marry him, too. Dick. Well, I never. Is it true? Are you engaged to Dick? Nobody said I was engaged. He asked me to marry him. My goodness, the girl's got to do something for excitement in this one-horse town. Well, got to be getting down to the office. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, Daddy. Daddy. Huh? You've just got to give me fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? What for? Oh, they're having the most marvelous day at Obermeyer's. This is for fifty dollars. Reduced for ninety-seven. It's such a bargain. I'd like to marry Anne. I just can't afford it. I haven't got it. Please, Daddy. I know, but Amy and Sam are coming back on our hands now, and I've got to figure so out... So they're coming back, eh? I see. Plenty of money for Amy and Sam and everybody in this family but me. I never have a thing. I'm actually ashamed to go places. <laughs> well, if you want it as bad as all that, I guess I can manage. <laughs> Stop into the office. I'll give it to you. Thanks, Daddy. You're an angel. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Darling, Wade's downstairs. Wade? Oh, heavens, whatever possessed him to come tonight? Well, I guess he doesn't know about Dick. You got to tell him? Of course not. You haven't said anything, have you? Not a word. Well, don't. It's pretty. It has got a nice line. 
carry it well, don't you think? Yes, indeedy. And Mumsy, look, bought new shoes, too. You didn't? Of course I did. Have to have new shoes to go with the new dress. I charged them to father. You shouldn't have done it. But they are pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and how are you? Gosh, you look pretty. <laughs> that, that a new dress? This? Oh, as a matter of fact, I think it is. Do you like it? Swell. Ought to be. It costs $50. Father. <laughs> how about the movies, Mary Ann? Got a swell show down at the palace. Oh, I don't think so. If you don't mind, I'd rather stay home with the family. I see so little of them. Well, what do you know about that? I know a lot about it. She's got another date. You have? Oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh, I do, Tom. I suppose if Dick Lily was to walk in here now, it would just be a coincidence. Father, will you make Hedrick mind his own business? Hedrick. Yes, Father. Come on, Wade. I'll teach you to play backgammon. Oh, no. I'm no good at games. It's all the rage in the East. Everyone who is anyone is learning to play backgammon. Answer that, will you, Hedrick? Oh, answer it yourself. Hedrick. All right. I do all the dirty work for the whole family. She never does a darn thing for nobody. <laughs> Hello, Doc. Hello, Hedrick. Well, how's the boy? Oh, fair to middle. Oh, so they finally caught those fellas in Cincinnati. Is that so? Hello, everybody. Hello, Dick. How's the doctor business, Richard? Oh, fine, Mr. Madison. Hello, Mary Ann. Hello, Dick. Well, what's this? Backgammon, you go on play. No, I'm no good at games. Say, there's a good picture at the palace. Wouldn't you like to go? Why, uh, no thanks, Dick. I, I, I've got a bit of a headache. I... Oh, I'm sorry. But I tell you what I would like. A breath of fresh air. Let's take a little walk. Sure. You won't mind, will you, Wade? <laughs> no, not a bit. Anyway, Laura will be here in a minute. Night, Daddy. Night. Bye. We'll be back soon. Bye, Dick. Bye, Henry. Darling, I thought you might need me. Oh, thanks, Mumsy. You're a dear. Hello, Dick. Hello, Miss Madison. Have a good time. Oh, we will, that. <laughs> Hello, Laura. Hello, Dick. Haven't seen you for a long time. Oh, well, I've been sort of busy. You know how it is. I guess doctors are kind of busy. Well, they certainly are in this town. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm all ready. All right. Good night, Laura. Good night. Good night, Laura. Let's go to the movies, after all. Sure, anything you say. Well, that's Wade's car, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Well, where's yours? Well, I'm sorry, Mary Ann. I let my kid brother have it tonight. Oh, I hate to ride in a bus. Well, if I'd known that... Oh, all right, come on. Well, I'm sorry, Mary Ann. I didn't think you'd learn. You know, Mrs. Madison, you're looking younger every day. Now, wait. Yeah, yeah. Father, <laughs> wouldn't you rather read in the dining room? The light's so much better in there. What? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The light is much better. Come on, Hedrick, up you go. I don't want to go to bed yet. Oh, yes, you do, and any way you're going. <laughs> You'll excuse me, I have some sewing to do. Sure. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Madison. They're certainly worried. Worried? About what? About marrying me off. Oh, <laughs> that ought to be easy. You'd be surprised. Oh, gosh, I think you'd make some fellow a swell wife. Would you now? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awfully sweet of you, Wade. The really swell one around here is Mary Ann. You're in love with her, aren't you? Oh, gosh, I, I guess most of the gang is, and I'm no different than any of the rest. I should think you'd know enough by now when to leave the girls alone. It's going to be hard enough getting Laura married. I don't want to get Laura married. I don't want to get any of our children married. I kind of like having them right here. <laughs> How would you like to play something for me? Well, see if I can. Haven't played for a long time. Now, what would you like? Oh, play anything. I don't care. I guess Dick's in love with Mary Ann, too, huh? He's one of the gang. Is Marianne in love with Dick? 
I guess so, wait. What's the matter? Oh, nothing, only... Only it's my head. I'm so tired. Would you mind awfully if I went to bed? No, not a bit. I, I'm, I'm sorry you don't feel well. Thanks, Wade. I'll be all right. Sure. You, you just take some aspirin or something. It's the best thing in the world for you. Always fixes me up. Well, good night. Good night. Let me see what's in that book. Curiosity killed the cat. Oh, don't be so mean. Let me see. Go to bed. Just one little look. You go to bed. All right. Good night. Good night. Say, Laurel. Now what? There's something I don't understand. Yes. Here's Wade in love with Mary Ann, Dick in love with Mary Ann, and you in love with Dick, and... Good night, Hedrick. All right, I'm going. of time. For a moment, I didn't recognize you. When did you get to town? Why, uh, just yesterday. I haven't had a chance to look you up. You don't know Dr. Lindley, do you? Uh, Dr. Lindley, this is Mr., um, uh... I didn't get the name? Uh, Corliss. Oh, how do you do? Glad to meet you. Hey, you. You can't park in the middle of the street. Move on. I'm practically moving. Well, since you nearly ran me down, the least you can do is drive me home. Save you the trouble, Dick, coming all the way out to the house and then back into town again. Well, I, I don't mind a bit. Oh, but you said you were tired. Hey, you! Are you going to get going or you want me to give you a ticket? Here we go. Call me tomorrow, Dick. Good night, Lindley. See you again. Well... I say so, was very neatly done. There was nothing exactly wrong with your cooperation. You belong... That, if I may say so, was very neatly done. There was nothing exactly wrong with your cooperation. You belong here? Where? In this town. Well, I live here, but I don't belong. I get it. What's your name? <laughs> Mary Ann Madison, what's yours? Corliss. Val Corliss. Pleased to meet you. I 
assure you, the pleasure is mine. Here's where we turn, on the right. Very good, madam. Last stop, all out. No, not all. Just me. No, oh, why? Well, the family's probably still up. How could I explain you? <laughs> we met. We met. Where? I don't know. Where have you been? Very few places. You ever been to New York? Nope. Chicago? Not even. Columbus? Yes, I've been to Columbus. No, when? Last spring. Well, fine. That's where we met then, you and I. For springtime in Columbus and... We met at the Hudson. The Hudson? Friends of the family. I stayed with them. Hurrah for the Hudson. You know, the Hudson's are awfully nice people. They really are. <laughs> they certainly were when they introduced me to you. <laughs> Well, good night. Good night. Will you call me tomorrow? Every hour on the hour. Perhaps you'll come to dinner. Well, now, don't tell me you cook, too. <laughs> if the family depended on me for that, they'd starve to death. <laughs> well, good night. Well, say, wait a minute. You didn't give me your phone number. Well, you wouldn't remember, but it's in the book. Madison's the name. John Madison. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Oh, boy. again. You don't like lace, do you, Laura? Of course I do. Then why don't you wear lace pants? Oh, for the love of... Will you please go inside and get some more clothes? I will if you tell me why you don't wear lace pants. Just because I don't. Guess they must be kind of scratchy anyway. <laughs> hey, Dick, what do you want? How long since you've been to Aunt Sarah's? About a week. Don't you think it would be nice if you went there to supper tonight? How much? Quarter. Cash? Cash. When to get it? When you go to Aunt Sarah's. Okay. Ain't you through cleaning that yet? No, not yet. We're having a Mr. Callers for dinner tonight. Will you stay and help? No, I got a date. Please, Minnie. I hate waiting on table when there's company. Just this one. <laughs> won't be through with the laundry in time. Oh, but we won't have dinner until 7.30. 7.30? I never heard of such a crazy thing. But you will stay, won't you, Minnie? Please, Minnie. All right, I'll stay. And, Minnie, you'll be careful, won't you? Of what? Well, uh, of the way you stir. You won't drop things, will you, Aunt? And you won't stand gaping and listening to the conversation. Say, listen. I told you that I got a date. And if you think you're not going to be satisfied... Oh, no, wait... Minnie, I'm sure you'll do splendidly. Hmm. But you will be careful, won't you? Of what? Nothing, Minnie. <laughs> Say, how many will I set the table for? Bless my soul, I forgot. What? Sam and Amy's coming on the 5.30 this afternoon. Seven, Minnie. Sam and Amy? I sure will be glad to see them. <laughs> oh, well. Sam and Amy. Ten Can you imagine what they looked like at that dinner table? Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee for every good and precious gift. And we ask thee to bless this food which thou hast given us, thy servants. We beseech thee to make us worthy of thy bounty and make us worthy, O Lord, of thy divine kindness. Amen. Why, Hedrick, darling, I thought you were dining at Aunt Sarah's. Aunt Sarah dines at six. 
so I ate and come home. All right, Minnie, you can come in now. Please, Hedrick, not so loud. Hello, Minnie. How you been? Oh, fine, Sam. And how's yourself? I've been feeling pretty good, considering we're expecting the baby any time now. <laughs> oh, I hope it's a boy. <laughs> What's the matter? Listen, Sam, don't you know when you dine at 7.30, you ain't supposed to talk to the servants? Hedrick. Must be awfully nice having your whole family here at the same time. Yeah. We're going to have some more in the family pretty soon, Mr. Corliss. Oh, good for you. It's going to be a boy. Well, Sam, how do you know? When I say I'm going to have a boy, I have a boy. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like what you've seen of Council City, Mr. Corliss? Why, it's even more charming than I expected. What did you expect? Well, I don't know exactly. Just an ordinary small town. You're right, this isn't an ordinary small town. It's the fastest growing community in the country. What are you doing here anyway? Shh, Hedrick. Oh, Hedrick, please behave. Oh, that's quite all right. He's got a perfect right to know. You see, Hedrick, I'm vice president of a new company called the Electro Household Corporation. The reason I'm here is with an idea of building a factory on the outskirts of the town. You don't say so. Who's going to have the plumbing contract for your factory? I'm in the plumbing business, uh, that is, I was... Uh, Sam, you've interrupted Mr. Corliss. Why, not at all, Mrs. Halcombe. I'd be very glad to talk that over with you when we decide to build. You see... I plan to take in a limited number of local people and make them partners. Oh, I think that sounds perfectly wonderful. Is that so? Who are you thinking of having? Well, your father, for instance. His reputation for honesty and integrity is pretty well known to us. Now, how would you like to be the secretary and treasurer of a big corporation? Me? Secretary and treasurer to a big corporation. Oh. <laughs> well, yes, why not? Yes, Daddy, why not? After all, I don't see why not. Of course, Mr. Cordes, you realize I haven't any money to invest right now, but times have been kind of hard. Oh, now, wait a minute. We don't want your money. All we want is your name and that sound business judgment of yours. Sounds good to me, Pa. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll look into it a little closer and... Doggone, I'd like to be secretary and treasurer of a big corporation. <laughs> Minnie! Minnie! Why, what's the matter? You little devil. Hedrick, leave the room. Are you hurt? Uh, no, I ain't hurt. And I think you're just wonderful. Mr. Corliss, just a second. Telephone call for you, Mr. Corliss. Oh, for me? Oh, pardon me, will you? I was expecting a long-distance call, and I took the liberty of telling the hotel where I'd be. Thank you. Hello? Yes? Yes, this is Corliss. Oh, sure, yes, yeah, fine. Oh, it's a great little town. Yes, seems like an ideal spot for the factory. What? Who wants more stock? Well, you tell them they can't have it. No, sir. No, we don't need any more money. Yes, yeah, that's right. Goodbye. Bedtime. 
one. No, dear. <laughs> Will you excuse me just a minute, Mr. Corley? Why, certainly. Good night, Hedrick. <laughs> What were we saying? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Hedrick, he does have such a hard time of it. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I guess kids are the same the world over. You've traveled a lot, haven't you? Yes, I guess I have. I wonder if I'll ever get away from this. To go places, see things, dance in beautiful ballrooms. I guess the nearest I'll ever get to a New York cabaret is the wrong end of a radio. No, oh, you... You can't tell. Stranger things have happened. Perhaps. Perhaps what? Hello, Marianne. Oh. Oh, hello, well. Dick. <laughs> you remember Mr. Corliss, don't you? Yes, well, hello, hello, Doctor. Well, how's the family? Oh, fine. Dick, I wish you'd run in and get Laura out here. The poor kid's been indoors all day. Do you mind? No, I'll bring her out. How would you like to take a little walk, Mr. Corliss? There's nothing I'd rather do than take a walk. Hello, Mary Ann. What to do? Oh, hello, Wade. Uh, Mr. Collins, Mr. Trumbull. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. You're a stranger around here, aren't you? <laughs> well, I was, but uh, the Madison family have been so kind to me that they've made me feel very much at home. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> Mr. Collins is going to build a factory in town, Wade. Oh. oh, is that so? Yes, indeed. I hope it does great things for the town. Well, I, I hope it really gets built. And what do you mean? Well, nothing. Or there's been a lot of people going to build factories around here. Oh, I see. Well, I think you'll get one this time. <laughs> That's good. We're going for a walk, Wade. Uh, here's Laura now. Hello, Wade. Hello. I'm going to show Mr. Corliss your garden, Angel. Really, Mr. Corliss, Laura does the most marvelous things with flowers. They're just too beautiful. Beautiful night, isn't it, Dick? Yeah, it is. Be careful. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go back and say good night. Then I'll get rid of them. And you come back in half an hour. I'll be back. Tends to build. It looks good to me. It looks like a big thing. And here's a picture of the factory. Well, I'm going to leave it all up to you, John. When you say it's all right to go ahead, I'm ready to pay my share over to Corley. And that goes for me, too. And me. Don't be too hasty. I'll write Ed Greaves in New York to investigate the proposition, and if he says it's all right and sends us a good report, well, then I think we can all go in on it. Well, whatever you say, John. 
So like the last one, boys? Sure, sure. Excuse Excuse boys. Yes, sir. Hello? Yes? What? What? I'm a boy! And he's got a grandfather. I mean, he's got a boy. He's <laughs> got a boy. It's a boy. What? Yeah. <laughs> Here, keep the change. <laughs> Me! I'm a grandfather! I'm a grandfather! <laughs> I'm a grandfather! <laughs> Gosh. When I say I'm going to have a boy, I have a boy. <laughs> say, I didn't see no stork. Shh, Hedrick. Say, you don't think they'll get my boy mixed up with the others, do you? <laughs> <laughs> they'll be able to tell him all right. He'll eat with his knife. Shh. I bet that that Bloomberg baby over there looks just like his old man. Hey, Izzy, what's the price of overalls? Gee, that's a funny-looking one there, too. <laughs> Where's my grandchild? Where is he? Everything is fine. You haven't a thing to worry about. Thanks very much, Doctor. Congratulations. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> I hate to talk business, Marianne, but I also hate to see your father lose a chance to make a fortune. All his friends are perfectly willing to put up their money as soon as he says the proposition is all right. What can I do to help you, Val? I'll do anything you say. It's going to mean a lot to you, too. Why, well, I know. Travel, sea life, Columbus. <laughs> 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 no, but seriously, if you can get your father to sign this paper, you'll never have to worry about another thing as long as you live. Oh, I know how to handle father. You just leave it to me. Mm, I'd like to leave a lot of things to you. Come on, young man. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we are. <laughs> Don't keep him out too long, Sam. All right, Ma. Bye. Bye. Well, how do you do, Mrs. Asterbilt? Once a plumber, always a plumber. <laughs> Where's Father? In the dining room, doing some bookkeeping. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Marianne. I just made out your check for your allowance. I'm sorry. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Marianne. I just made out your check for your allowance. I'm sorry I'm a couple of days late. Oh, that's all right, Daddy. I know you've been hard pressed. But you won't be any more. That is, you won't be if you sign this. What is it? 
Just a letter accepting Val Corliss' proposition to be treasurer of his company. Hold on. It says more than that here. It says that I've thoroughly investigated Mr. Corliss and the Electro Household Corporation, and I find them both to be... But I haven't done anything of the sort. I haven't even heard from Ed Grieve yet. Well, all I can say is if you're going to wait forever, it's going to be too late. You'll never get in on it then. Well, that'll be just too bad, Marianne. But I'm not going to encourage my friends to go into something that I'm not sure of. But you can be sure of this. Good heavens, you've only got to look at Mr. Corliss to know the kind of man he is. This is just like you. Slow, cautious. Always suspecting everybody. I'm not suspecting anybody. It's just that I... Don't let's go into all that again. I know what you're going to say. You've said it a thousand times before. All I ever hear is a lot of preaching about respectability and honor and all the rest of that rot. Marianne. But you can't eat respectability. And honor doesn't buy clothes and automobiles or all the other things other girls have and I have to do without. Well, I'm trying to do my best. Your best? A lot of good your best has been... All our lives will probably go on being in the same rut. I'm tired of it, I tell you. I'm sick of being the daughter of a failure. Failure? Yes, a failure, that's what you are. You never have amounted to anything and you never will. I hate you. I hate you all. How dare you? How dare I? I'll show you how I dare. He's a failure, that's what he is. He's a failure. Telephone for the doctor, quick, quick. Main, six, four, five. Hello, hello. This thing? This is Laura. Come over quickly, please. Yes, Mary Ann. Yes, she's fainted. Oh, I don't know, but hurry. Hurry. Nothing serious. Just nerves. Been under strain lately? Oh, sort of. Hm. I'll bet she ain't any more sick than I am. A lazy good for nothing thing. One minute. Bye. Bye. Serious? Nothing at all, Miss Madison. Just nerves. She'll be all right in the morning. Oh, I'm so relieved. <laughs> Here, you're not so good yourself. Oh, oh. oh, I'm all right, Doctor. I guess I had too much dinner. Hey, all right, nothing. You're going to bed right now. Get my bag, will you, Laura? Oh, Laura. Tell Marianne I didn't mean to upset her. I'm sorry I couldn't do what she asked me to. Better get him another blanket.
I don't want to alarm you, Laura, but it's going to take a good many days of peace and quiet to bring your father around. No talk of business. Just let him lie there and rest. I'll keep him quiet. Well, don't bother about coming down. Well, that's all right, please. Dave, if Marianne isn't asleep, you better tell her about her father. I think I will. Was she asleep? Yes. Yeah. Good. That's what she needs, a good night's sleep. I need a good night's sleep myself. <laughs> uh, what is the time for the baby's bottle? Not right. You know, Laura, you'd make some man a wonderful wife. Oh, I'll never marry. Well, why not? Oh, many reasons. In the first place, oh, I don't know. Guess I've never found any man I could really fall in love with. Well, I'm not surprised. I don't know anybody that'd be good enough for you. Now, Dick. Oh, I mean that. <laughs> would you like a cup of coffee? Hey, would I? Just wait, Lloyd, take a minute. All right. Anybody who gave this to you, just say you found it. Well, here. Where did you get that? Why, well, I found it. I... I'm sorry, Laura. I never wanted you to know. I never dreamed you felt that way. Yeah, I... I know you didn't. Let's forget it. Let's pretend it never happened. What do you say? Sure, that's a go. You know, I don't think I'm going to be able to wait for that coffee. I have another call to make. You don't mind, do you? Well, that's all right. Some other time. Sure.
I'm sorry, Laura. Honest, I am. I didn't mean any harm. That's all right, Hedrick. I know you didn't. Hello, Dave. I've got Madison's letter right here in my hand. He says everything is 100%. We should go ahead and close the deal. Yeah. Just as soon as I looked at this fella call us, I knew he was all right. Yeah, sure. Well, what's the next move? Well, uh, we'll call a meeting this afternoon and put up our money right away. Say, this is the greatest in the world that ever struck this town. And sure as you're alive, we're going to make a lot of money. You know that fella Corliss is alive, why? Well, I think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, Father's inside. We brought him down this morning. Oh. Well, it's good to see you downstairs again. It's good to be here, Marianne. Gosh, I don't see why everybody's making such a fuss. I feel fine. I'm so glad. Got to run. Where are you going? I'm taking some old clothes down to the Women's Civic League. They're, they're sending some stuff to the poor. Will you be back soon? Yes. Dressing out to the woman civically. Got some more clothes for them. You'll you'll excuse me, won't you? You will. I see your dad. I'll be glad to drop you off. No, no thanks, Dick. I I'm in quite a hurry. I... Not a bit. Why should I be when I'm going to be your wife? Well, say, listen. I've got a great idea. Instead of getting married here, we'll... Oh, but... Now, you know perfectly well that the loping couples never get married in the hometown. I'm so happy. I don't care where we get married. Are you happy too, Val? Am I? Do I look it? A couple more weeks of good rest, and you'll be able to go back to that office and work harder than ever. Hmm. I guess I'll have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, how's the rest of the family? Just fine, thanks. And where's uh, Laura? Well, I guess she's upstairs feeding the baby. You know, I haven't seen that baby for almost a week. I think I ought to run up and take a look at it. And go right ahead. He loves visitors. Sure he loves the visitors. He don't have to clean up after them. I've cooked more company dinners in the last four weeks in this house than most folks have in a year. Come in. Hello. Well, I thought I'd drop in and see how the young man's getting on. Oh, he's just as healthy as he can be. Good. And what an appetite. <laughs> What's he weigh now? Nine pounds, two ounces. Well... <laughs> well, I'm glad he's getting on all right.
please. Hello. Are you sure Mr. Corliss hasn't come back yet? Did you get Mr. Corliss? I phoned the hotel. He left town yesterday. Oh. oh, it'll be all right, Mother. It's just like Mary Ann to want to elope. They'll probably come back today. Come right in, Miss Madison. This is a pleasant surprise. How are you, Dick? Fine. Let me get you a chair. Oh, this will do nicely, thanks. Well, all right, if it's a social call. It is? Very. I've got great news for you, Dick. I'm ready to marry you. Well, you asked me to, didn't you? Yes, of course. There's only one condition. We've got to be married immediately and leave town. Oh, I'm so fed up with it all. I want to get out of here right away. But I thought you were in love with Corliss, Marianne. I, I don't know what to say. You mean you don't care for me anymore? Well... Well, no, not in the way I used to. You see, I thought you'd gotten over caring for me, and... Well, I guess I just put you out of my mind. And then... And then? Then I fell in love with someone else. With Laura. With Laura? How wonderful. I just know you're going to be happy. Well, well, thank you, Mary Ann. gonna do any good worrying, Mother. She must be with Corliss. You go on up to him while I get his bottle ready. You better wait out here, Tom. Okay. How to Mr. Madison. We want to see John. Oh, he... He's right inside there. You'll excuse me, won't you? I'm so busy with the baby. He's right in there. Hello, how are you, boys? Come to visit me or my grandson? Well, what's going on? What are you all so glum about? Corliss checked out of the hotel yesterday morning without leaving any forwarding address. And he took all our money with him? Electro Household Corporation. Huh. There's no such firm. This looks very, very shady to me. Well, then, why did you give Corliss your money? Why didn't you wait until I heard from New York? Oh, we waited all right till we got your letter. What letter? You know Mighty Bell, what letter? John, I want my money or... Accusing the mail to the fraud, that's what it is. But what letter? Why? Well, is that your signature? Paulus fooled me. And I thought he was all right. 
I'm sorry I got you into this, boys. You're sorry? That's fine. But what about our money? I tell you, you use the mails to defraud. It's prison offense. Father never signed that letter. I forged his signature. What are you going to do about it? I can cash in my life insurance. That'll pay some of it back. I can sell the house. I give you my word of honor, I'll pay back every cent that you've lost. Only promise me you'll keep Marianne out of it. Well, if John pays back the money, why? I'm satisfied. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> oh, Mm. Doggone, I'm just so happy, honey. I can't believe it's true. You've got it all coming to you, darling. You're the best-hearted thing in the world. Just look at all you've done for Papa. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in here. Froze by now. You're a dear to come over and help. Always glad to do things for them as appreciates them. Thank you, Minnie. Well, am I supposed to answer the doorbell and do everything else around here? I'll answer it. <laughs> come on, sweetheart. Somehow, it doesn't seem natural for her to be so nice. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh, Mary, I'm sorry. Come right in, we'll start. You better get a good 